Welcome back to another amazing episode of Rounds of the Night's Table. I'm Jim. Today we're going to be talking about Velvet Buzzsaw. This film's directed by Dan Gilroy, director of Nightcrawler. It stars the same cast. I mean, plus John Malkovich, but, you know, whatever. This film is essentially about greed in the art world. Uh, Gyllenhaal plays art critique, Morph van der Wart. Vanderwald. Yeah, something like that. Morph, who is in a relationship with a man named Ed, what a plain name, Ed, has an affair with this woman, Josefina, who works for Rene Russo, Rodora, owns this art gallery and I guess essentially owns John Malkovich, who is an artiste. But his work's been kind of lacking lately, he hasn't worked on anything new, everything else has been shit. The artist named Ventral Dees, which is a uh, Stupid fucking name. This man dies in Josefina's building. And she finds him, and she finds all this art. She's like, oh, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. His artwork starts to come to life. Ooh. I mean, there's just pictures and paintings. Not shit I can paint, so yeah, that's great. But they've kind of ventured out in the art world to where it's that hobo man. I can't save you. And that stupid sphere gives you orgasm fingers. To each his own. And there's a worker in Rene Russo's gallery who's transporting the art, and he decides he's going to take one, so he does that. But when that happens, he catches on fire and has to pull off into this gas station and then gets strangled out by some art monkeys, some monkeys fixing a car on the wall. So then there's this competing art gallery who's trying to take this up-and-coming artist from Rene Russo. They're fighting over this guy, Dan Riche. He gets killed by some random hand that strangles and hangs him. He's found by Natalia Dyer of Stranger Things fame. Thank you very much. I didn't even realize that when I was watching this movie. And it kills this rival art gallery person after, you know, he threatens to come out with the story of this ventral D's as he's been investigating, which also subsequently Jake Gyllenhaal's character is also investigating to see what's going on and this guy he like was in a madhouse and there's blood in his artwork tony collette she decides she wants to be part of it she wants to up her ante and she's breaking away from whatever agency whatever firm she worked with to kind of go on her own and she wants to show that she's high dollar and so she decides to stick her arm in sphere and if you saw the trailer then you saw how everybody died except renee russo and it tears her fucking arm off, and she bleeds out, and the people that are coming to visit the gallery think that it's part of the exhibit. Jake Gyllenhaal's starting to hallucinate and see shit in the paintings, like the hand reaching out. That's when he finds out that this Ventral D's said to destroy all of his art when he was gone. Jake Gyllenhaal tells Rene Russo, you gotta stop selling the shit. So this woman, Josefina, who Jake Gyllenhaal's been having a relationship with, she's fucking this up-and-coming artist, Damrish. And he's kind of like, nah, I'm good. I, you know, I don't want to be a part of this world anymore. So he kind of splits. And all of a sudden, she's tr transported to some fucking gallery. And the fucking paint gets her. Ugh. That's how I feel at Lowe's when I'm going through 8,000 swatches trying to pick out a goddamn color for my living room. Jake Gyllenhaal, who's hired Natalia Dyer, who has found, like, every single person dead. He found She found Tony Collette. She found the rival... Artist, Don Don, John John, Don John. She's trying to help Jake Gyllenhaal get rid of his art that he has from, from D's, from what he bought. Hobo Man's there, and he fucking snaps his neck. I can't save you. Rene Russo's talking to Dan Reich. She, she wants to display his artwork, and he's like, you know, I read about you. I heard about you. You're the dangerous one. You used to be in some band, Velvet Buzzsaw. Rene Russo, she realizes after all these people have died that she needs to get rid of his artwork. But yet she still has a tattoo of Velvet Buzzsaw. And it comes to life and fucking cuts into her neck. Meanwhile, John Malkovich is kind of left. He's gone on some beach. He's just drawing lines in the sand. He's happily drawing lines. Let's talk about the good. Strong fucking cast. Netflix has zero chill when pulling out the big guns. 
And I know Gyllenhaal gets a lot of heat and a lot of hate, but I don't mind him, man. Let the kid act. He can fucking act. There was a, a good blend of dark comedy and a little bit of suspense. I appreciate that it didn't take itself so seriously because more often times than not, these artistic self-pleasing movies like to pleasure themselves and aim up and come all over themselves. Do us a favor. Put it on the sanitary and flush it down the fucking toilet. Let's talk about the bad. Oof. It just didn't come with the clear message. Dan Gilroy, who wrote the Superman movie that never got made, was supposed to star Nicolas Cage, but the producers shut it down because they were, were worried it wasn't going to make any money, and so that's where this all comes from. And okay, I can appreciate that, but that's your art. Ventral D's art isn't the only art that's killing people, so what are you saying, that this art is possessing other art? I didn't appreciate that. I thought that it should have just been his art. And that, that was it. Not some random fucking piece of art. He didn't make Hobo Man. He didn't make fucking Sphere. Not still canon. Movie's almost two hours. Could have easily been 90 minutes. And they wasted Tony Collette. And I'm wondering if John Malkovich is okay. You okay? Blink twice. I feel like Netflix is holding him hostage. My final thought. It's not the worst Netflix movie I've seen this year. It's not even the worst Netflix movie I've seen with John Malkovich this year. I'm looking at you, Bird Box. That's where you are. I can appreciate that Netflix has an ungodly amount of money to throw at artists to make the films that they want to make with limited producer meddling. I can appreciate that, and I think that's how you end up with some great films. And Netflix isn't quite there. But I feel like they're kind of middle of the road, and it, and it just misses. I'm going to score this a 6.1 out of 10. I want to know what you guys thought of this movie. Please check it out. It's worth the watch. I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to watch it. Some very good performances. It's fucking weird. Hit those likes. You already know what the fuck it is. If you're new, hit that subscribe. And we'll check you out Monday through Friday at noon, only on Round.